following movie, we'll take a look at a best practice process for creating 1D connections between shell meshes using Universal Connections, which is available starting in SimCenter version 12. Here we can see we have an assembly that consists of three components. In each of the individual plate components, we only have the plates. There's no wavelength points uh, in any of the, uh, the plate components. The points only reside in the skeleton part. Here you can see our point set. We'll begin here. Uh, we need to first apply a name to the points. So here we'll go ahead and select the points in the point set. Go to Properties on the General tab and we'll assign a name to those points. Here you can see the names displayed. Uh, if you don't see it, you can go to Preferences, Visualization, Names and Borders, and Show Object Names All Views so that you can see the name that you've just assigned. Uh, we should click on the FEM so that those uh, properties propagate to the FEM. And if we don't, they won't, which we'll find out in just a moment. So just taking a look at the, f the two component FEMs, you can see there's no mesh points, there's no points in there. Now in the assembly FEM, we'll create a selection recipe based on an attribute, assign it to a point, and we'll resolve it to no FE entities. Here we'll select the name attribute, type in the name fastener, and if we say show results, we don't see any, and that's because the fastener name has not propagated to the skeleton fem. So let's go to the skeleton fem, which just has points in it. There's no nodes or elements or meshes in there. It's just the points. And now if we go, say, select contents of that selection recipe, because those attribute uh, names now exist, you can see that we're selecting the points with the selection recipe. Now we can use that selection recipe in creating a universal connection. The one that we want to use is a spot weld, and the reason for that is because we're able to leverage the selection recipe in it. We can also uh, select the number of flanges. Here we only have two, but you could have three or four flanges that we could connect in this fashion as well. Then here for the locations, we'll use the selection recipe. Here we'll select our attribute recipe. We'll say add location. Then we need to fill out the tolerances. Uh, some of the important ones are the max normal distance from definition to support. So that would be the distance between the flanges there. And then we also need to specify the physical. So we, we didn't complete the selection. Let's go back and um, assign the physical properties for the uh, bolt or spot weld material we, and also the diameter of that shank uh, of that element as well. We'll go ahead and leave that at point 0.2. Alright, and then it goes ahead and uh, we also can specify how we want those connections created. And we have a few options here you can see from C hexa plus RBE3. We'll go for the C bar plus RBE2 option for spot welds. And it uh, goes ahead and creates the connection. Uh, if we want to take a closer look at that connection, uh, we can see the um, in the collectors that it created, there's a C bar collector with the shank element, and then there's also an RBE2 collector with the spider that spiders it out to the uh, the nodes. Now let's take a look at how this methodology will survive an update. We'll begin with uh, removing a point from our point set by making our line a little bit shorter. We'll keep the pitch the same. And uh, there's just a remnant of the faster name. If we updated the view, I, I think that may go away. But here you can see the FEM has updated to five points. And our assembly FEM just needs an update. And now we have our five connections reflected. If we want to add a point, we'll go ahead and make our line a little bit longer. Uh, 
And what you'll see is the new point that was created does not have a name associated with it. So we'll need to assign a name to it. So we'll go ahead and select again all the points in the point set. We really only need to select the points that don't have names, but here just to simplify the selection. So here you can see we have a name now assigned to that point. We'll go ahead into the FEM so that that name change propagates into the FEM for the skeleton. And then we can go back to our assembly FEM. And you can see that uh, all we need to do now is update our assembly FEM and it completes the addition of the additional fastener. And that concludes the demonstration.